Hi, my name is Mike Rutkowski. I'm now 65 years old, and I happily live in Oakland, Maryland, near Deep Creek Lake. And uh, the Lord has asked me to do another video for him, and so here I am. Uh, it's a very cold, chilly day here up in uh, Oakland. Uh, we've had some snow, rain, and uh, right now it's a lot of the snow's melted, but it's actually like a little flurries right now. Anyway, uh, what the Lord wanted me to talk about uh, has to do again with believers and sickness in their life. Uh, I just cannot tell you how tiring it gets and how trying it can be dealing with people with their wickedness and their evilness in this world. I mean, and I'm talking about believers now. I'm talking about these are people that supposedly believe in Jesus Christ, and I'm telling you just how evil and wicked they truly are. They don't really believe in Jesus. They really don't even know anything about Jesus. And I'm going to try to point that across to you today. Uh, over and over, I get people that try to sit there and say, oh, well, it's normal for us to be sick. God, you know, we, are, we all get sick. It's a normal occurrence and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's total and, and pure nonsense. I mean, it, it's, it, it shows that you, you don't understand a thing about Scripture. And, you know, I want to pose a question to you that I wrote down here. Now, think about this. If Jesus removed the sickness from everyone who came to him in Scripture, and I'm somebody that's testifying to this truth that it's still available today, then kindly explain to me why you have sickness in your life. Think about this now. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. He's the same always, yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. So if he healed everybody back then, what makes you think that he's not healing people still today, that it's available to everybody today? You know, if you know the scriptures, it says that Jesus healed everyone that came to him. Not just a few here or there, but everyone. Do you know that I honestly have some people that try to come up and say to me, they say things like, well, no, Jesus, there's scriptures where Jesus didn't heal everyone. You know, there, there's a, a couple out there that said, you know, that uh, Jesus couldn't heal, perform any miracles, so he couldn't heal everyone. That's not saying that Jesus couldn't heal them. It's, it, let me read these scriptures to you, then maybe you'll get an idea of what they're actually talking about. This is Matthew 13, 54 to 58. Coming to his hometown, he began preaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they ask? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where, the, where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and in his own ha home and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith it didn't say that Jesus couldn't do it it's just saying that they didn't go to Jesus they didn't turn to Jesus they didn't come to Jesus so that he could heal them and, you know and it tells you the same thing in Mark and this is in Mark 6 1 to 6 it says Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles that he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. He's trying to tell you that, you know, Jesus couldn't do the miracles. It's not because 
the people didn't come to him. They didn't truly believe in him. They didn't truly turn to him. And that is what is happening to most of the believers out there today. They don't really believe in Jesus. They're not truly turning to Jesus. As I'm trying to tell you, I mean, think about what I just said before. If you supposedly really know Jesus and Jesus healed everybody that turned to him, then why do you have sickness in your life still? Why is it that you have sickness in your life? It's your sins that are causing you to be sick. It's because of your lack of knowledge of Scripture that you don't understand. And you have not actually turned to Jesus. You may think that you understand Scripture and you may think that you're doing all the right things, but guess what? You're not. You're living a lie. You're just a deceived soul and you're believing in all the wrong things. You don't understand what you're reading. You know, you're, you're, you're not following Jesus. You're following some mortal man or woman at some church, some synagogue, or on the internet. And I can't tell you how many times I get kids on the internet coming to me with their completely delusional beliefs. They just do not understand a thing about Scripture. And so they haven't turned to Jesus. They don't understand how to turn to Jesus. And this is why this one scripture applies to the majority of believers in this world. This is, um, this is in Matthew 13, 14 to 15. And it says, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of the people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, least they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. In other words, Jesus saying, if you come to me, then I will heal you. But that's the problem. If you're sick, guess what? You didn't turn to Jesus. You don't know how. And I'm telling you, it's available to you because I am someone who is living that life. I never get sick. I, you know, I'm 65 years old now. I have Medicare and I don't need this stuff. I don't want this stuff. You know, when they were first trying to throw this thing on me, they came to me with this Medicare Part B, you know, and they were saying, you know, well, uh, you, you know, like supposedly here in the United States, Medicare Part A, you get for free. So, you know, okay, so I get it for free, I guess because, you know, it worked my entire life what, before I knew God. And, uh, but the Part B, you actually have to pay for. Well, I don't want the Part B. I don't need the Part B. So why do I want to pay for something I'm never going to use? So when they approached me about it, I said, I, I don't want it. And th then they said to me, oh, well, are you getting it elsewhere, like through a private insurer? And I was like, no, I'm never going to use it. I never get sick. I could tell the woman on the phone thought I was crazy by saying that, you know, and uh, she was like, well, you know, your, your rates will go higher if you end up taking it later when you do get sick. I was like, what part of the conversation did you not understand here, ma'am? I was like, I don't get sick. I don't ever get sick. I'm never going to need it. I was like, I know God. I know Jesus. I know what he did for me. I was like, he cleansed me of my sins. So guess what? I never get sick anymore. You know, of course, they just look at you like you're a, a fruitcake, a total nutcase. They don't get it. They don't understand it. It just goes completely over their head. Well, guess what? That's the majority of believers today. You, you're the same way. You don't understand. You just are not getting it. You're believing, you're following all the wrong things. You're putting your faith and trust in the wrong people, and you do not understand Scripture. You do not know a thing about Scripture. And, and this is what uh, some people I'm very close with, what I was trying to get across to them the other day. You cannot live the Word of God if you do not understand or know the Word of God. So how can you apply it to your life if you don't know it, if you don't make the effort and spend the time every day to read Scripture over and over and over? You know, I, I told people, it's like, I'm at the place to our, I've read scripture so many times that as I'm reading it, it's like I already know what, what the next verse is talking about and everything else.
because it's embedded into me now. I can't think otherwise. I can't do otherwise because I live my life by the Word of God. I know what Jesus did for me. That is why I never get sick. My, my wife never gets sick. My kids never get sick because they are living by the blessing that Jesus provided for all of us. They are standing on the Word of God. And this is why you people, if you are sick, then guess what? If you can get sick, then guess what? You don't know Jesus. You really don't know him at all. And you're believing and following all the wrong things. You're listening to mortal men. I've got a post on Facebook that uh, talks about, you know, just this type of thing. And it's, I, I got kids that come to me galore and they're constantly going, oh, I think I'm doomed to hell. You know, I, I believe I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Well, I, I mean, it, it, they show their complete ignorance, okay? If you're somebody that is blasphemed the Spirit, guess what? You probably don't even know that you blaspheme the Spirit. You, you don't believe that you blaspheme the Spirit. If you're somebody that is worried about blaspheming the Spirit, then guess what? It's about a 99.9% .9 chance that you have not, and you're just allowing the devil to play you in your mind because of your ignorance of Scripture. I mean, it is literally every day I go to my wife and I'm like, oh my Lord, I got another kid, you know, worrying that they blaspheme the Spirit. Uh, it, it's just amazing, and, and these people are displaying their ignorance over and over and over in their comments on YouTube and Facebook and everything else, and they have no idea that they're simply, they're just allowing the devil to play them because they're looking for God in all the wrong places. You know, Scripture tells us that there's only going to be a few that are going to be saved. The majority of people are going to perish. Now, why do you think that is? It's because the majority of you out there you have no idea what you're believing in. You're following all the wrong things. You're believing all the wrong things. You're listening to some mortal man directing you instead of you going directly to Jesus. I'm sitting here right now and I'm telling you that you can communicate directly to Jesus yourself. You do not need me. You do not need any mortal man to talk to you, to guide you in Scripture, to teach you Scripture. And that is where you've gone astray, because you're listening to some mortal man instead of going directly to God yourself. You know, that is what Jesus did for us. He gave us the ability to go directly to God through Him. He's our mediator. He's our sole intercessor. I had a woman come to me the other day who's totally sick. But, you know, what is she believing in? The nonsense that the Catholic Church believes in. She tried to justify why she's praying to Mary, why she's praying to her saints, why she's praying to angels. And I told her, it's like, God commanded you to go directly to him and him alone. He said, I will not allow you to give my glory to somebody else. But yet, that's what these people are doing. They think they got to go to Mary. They think they got to go to some preacher, I mean, uh, some a uh, previous saint or pa Peter, Paul, something like that on their behalf. I mean, they're just pagans. They're proving that they're pagans because they're praying to somebody other than God. God is the only person you should be going directly to. So, you know, every time you go to a church, every time you go to somebody's ministry, you have no idea. You're actually sinning. Every time you're listening to people on the internet and you're subscribing to them and you're following what they're telling you and all the videos that they're posting, guess what you're doing? You're following them and you're not following Jesus and you're committing sin in your life. And that is why you have sickness in your life because you do not understand that your sins is what's bringing the sickness into your life. You know, this COVID nonsense, you know, that's why I'm so glad, you know, when the Lord moved me up here to the lake two years ago, I'll be up front with you. I was like, I did not want to come here full time. I mean, and this is a prime example why. I mean, because in the wintertime, boy, it gets cold. And um, 
you know, I was like, Lord, really don't want to go here, but guess what? I did what he instructed me to do. Well, guess not. I am so happy he moved me up here because as you can see, I mean, if you see around me, I'm in the park and there's nobody around. There's nobody here. So I don't have to put up with all the nonsense of this world. That's why it's like, you know, I don't even go grocery shopping that often or anything like that because I don't want to be around the nonsense of this world. I mean, these people run around wearing masks. Well, guess what? That mask isn't going to protect you. These politicians are not going to protect you. Doctors and nurses are not going to protect you. They are all simply clueless, misguided souls who have no idea of the blessing that Jesus provided for all of mankind. That mask is not going to do a thing for you. All it's doing is making you look like a silly fool that you are. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. And that you got some of these people that are so hysterical if they see somebody not wearing a mask. I mean, they just display their total ignorance of Scripture. And they prove that they're nothing but a godless fool who's going to perish in hell. So, you know... In this writing I did on Facebook, you know, I, I tried to give people, you know, I gave them like three obvious signs that you're following false prophets, you know, and, and they don't just, it just goes right over their head. First off, if a person, you know, if you go into a church and this person can get sick, well, guess what? They're not of God. There's no sickness with God. There never was, there never will be. That's what I'm sitting here and telling you. I never get sick because I know God. So if you're following some preacher who gets sick, then guess what? That's your first sign. He doesn't know God. He's of the devil. He's clueless in his knowledge of scripture, and you're just following some delusional soul who's giving you his, you know, misguided interpretations of scripture. You know, the second thing that I tell people is that, you know, I was like, think about it. Why do they have a ministry or a church if Jesus is our one and only teacher? That is what it's telling you in Scripture. Jesus is our sole teacher. That We should be going directly to him. As Scripture says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So you should be following Jesus and not some man. So, you know, think about me, for example. I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm not asking you to subscribe to me here on YouTube or Facebook or anything. You know, I have videos, I have posts and everything on, on YouTube and Facebook, but they're not there telling you to subscribe to me, to follow me, to donate to me or whatever or so forth. They're simply there telling you that you need to learn how to go to Jesus. And, you know, they're explaining that you can overcome sin and sickness in your life. They're just directing you. I'm just pointing you in the right direction and trying to tell you where you're going astray. I'm not asking you to come and follow me. Look at everybody else, though. They're sitting there and they're telling you, subscribe to me, come to me, come to my church, come to my ministry. So why is it wrong for a preacher you know, to have a church or ministry or something? Because now you're following him. You're not following Jesus. As I said, if you can go directly to Jesus yourself, then why do you need me? Why do you need some priest at some, you know, church? Why do you need, you know, some preacher at some ministry? You know, that's, that should be the obvious sign to you that they're a false prophet because they want you to come to them week after week at their ministry to donate your money to them, to come and listen to their false teachings when you should be going directly to Jesus yourself. That's the third thing that's an obvious sign, is, you know, when they're out there and they're asking you to donate their money. There's people out there galore. You know, you go on YouTube or you go to the churches, you go to the ministry, everything is to where they want you to donate. You know, they'll hand out a basket or so forth. They're looking for you to donate their money to, you, to them. They're asking you to donate to help support their cause. Well, think about it. I'm somebody, I know God. I was the president of a company. I was doing very, very well. God instructed me to walk away from it all, to give it up, to give my money away. I gave my money away. So what happens now? How do I survive? Well, guess what? God knows my, think about it. He created everything. He knows everything in this world. 
So if God knows what's going on in my daily life and he's watching over me and guiding me, do you not think he knows when I'm, you know, low on funds and, you know, and that he will send money my way? And that's what he does. I mean, when the situation arises, when things look totally dire, that's when God then directs somebody to send me money. It sounds crazy, does it not? But guess what? That's the truth, and that's how, it, that's how God operates. That's how he did it with me when he had me giving my money to people. He would direct me. I would just get these thoughts in my head telling me where to go, who to give it to, and that type of thing. That's how it's done. That's how he operates. You know, I, 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 some friends that I know, we have a chat group on Facebook, you know, and I related back in November, uh, I only had enough money to pay for my bills. I didn't have enough money to go grocery shopping. Now, we've been going grocery shopping about every three weeks. So here I am, um, I, I go to the Lord and I'm like, okay, Lord, what should I do here? Do you want me to pay my bills right now or do you want me to go grocery shopping? And I got from the Lord, he wanted me to go grocery shopping. And I was like, well, Lord, if I do, then I'm not going to have enough to pay for my bills. He's like, just go grocery shopping. So I listened to the voice inside my head and I followed it. I went grocery shopping. So... I'm in the middle of Walmart with my wife. We're going grocery shopping. All of a sudden, my phone, I get a message, and it's from this friend of mine named Justin. And it's like, Mike, the Lord just instructed me to send you some money. He's like, can you send me your PayPal account? And I was like, okay. And I just, I, I knew right away, even before Justin sent the money, I, I, it's like I knew what he was going to send me. And uh, sure enough, when he did end up sending me the money, I got a message a little bit later while we were in uh, Walmart still that he sent me $500. Well, guess what? My bills between uh, Walmart and we go to the store called Martin's in Cumberland, Maryland, uh, guess what? They totaled almost $500. <laughs> I mean, that is how God operates. That is what he does in your life. And when I went to Justin and I asked him, I was like, Justin, you know, and I related to him, you know, what was happening with me. I was like, how did you hear? And he was like, well, I just, he was like, I was just going about my day and then you popped into my mind in $500. He's like, and I, I kind of like just brushed it off and everything. He's like, but it just kept popping into my mind that I needed to give you $500. And then he told me something to where he said, like, well, I didn't even think that I had $500. He's like, because I set money aside for, like, tithing. But then he's like, the Lord showed me that I did actually have $500. And he was like, and that I needed to send it to you. And he's like, and that's how it came about. Well, that's exactly how it comes about with me, you know, when I do it for people. And, and that is how God operates with his true sons and daughters. So if you don't have these kind of things happening in your life, if you're still slaving at a job in this world, then guess what? You do not know God. You know nothing about God. You're simply a lost and deceived soul who's following all the wrong things. That is how God operates. He just, you know, he knows everything that's going on. And so there's no need for me to ask, you know, to sit here and say, hey, I'm low on funds, send me money, you know. God had me compose a book, you know, it's not like a book book, but it's in Microsoft Word of everything that he's taught me over these last year or two. And, uh, you know, at first I was like, well, what do you want me to do with it, you know? And at first I was like thinking, do you want me to actually write a book and sell a book? Is that how, like, I'm making money or so forth, you know? But then I sat because I know scripture and I'm like, well, well, that doesn't seem right, Lord, for me to do that because your word says freely you receive, freely give. And that's exactly correct. That's why, you know, like I give my book to whoever asks for it, as long as you're not a minor, by the way, because I have a lot of kids coming to me left and right and I will not send it to a minor, will not get involved with a minor and a parent. It's never gonna happen, sorry. So, uh, I give it freely to whoever desires it, whoever wants it. I don't charge for it. You know, as I say, what happens, you know, when I need money, the Lord will put it in somebody's heart to send me money. And it just happens just like that. 
may be for no reason at all, or it may be something that they read or seen that I have posted, and it touched their heart. And so, boom, they end up sending me the money. So, you know, once again, if you don't have these things in your life, then you're proving you don't know God, you don't understand God. And, and this is what everybody's missing. You're following mortal men left and right at these churches. And, and you're, as scripture says under the new covenant, the spirit now dwells inside of you. God lives in here. That's why he instructed you to go alone in your room and to pray. What you should be doing is just reading scripture over and over and over and over. And then when you learn, when you learn how to test the spirits, and that's the important thing that most people do not understand is how to test the spirits. That's your way to communicate with Jesus once you understand how to test the spirits. So as you're reading scripture, then you go directly to God yourself and you ask him your questions and he will answer them for you. That is how you gain the knowledge, but you gotta really desire it. You gotta really want it. If you don't go after it and seek it with all your heart, guess what? God's not just gonna automatically give it to you. And, and that's what so many people just don't understand. It just goes right over their head. You know, I had two people today came to me you know, trying to say that, oh, it's normal to get sick. Everybody gets sick. And, you know, and of course they use the same old, you know, scriptures over and over again about Paul's thorn in the flesh or the man born blind or supposedly Timothy had an illness and everything else. Well, today these two people, they use the Philippian scripture and they were using the ones with the and bear me with this because his name is a little complicated. It's, I think it's pronounced Epiditis, but uh, let me find it here real quick. This is in Philippians 2, 25 to 27. And it says, yet I consider it necessary to send you Epiditis, Epiditis, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your, me but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need, since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick, almost unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only in him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So, okay, they read that verse, and to them, that means that, oh, well, we, we're all just going to get sick, and it's all normal and everything else. Well, guess what? I was somebody who believed in Jesus when I followed the Catholic religion. I was ignorantly believing all the wrong things. I still believe, but guess what? I got sick. Why? Because I was believing in nonsense. I was sinning in the eyes of God. Well, guess what? Right here. You know, this one person this morning said, well, you know, here was a born again uh, believer, a sanctified believer, and I'm sitting there, I'm like going, okay, where does it say any place at all that this person was born again? Where does it say anything at all that he was sanctified? Doesn't say anything like that. These people don't understand what it means to be born again. They don't understand what it means to be sanctified in truth. What it's basically stating, he was just a believer that got sick. That meant that he was ignorant of truth at the time. He didn't understand it. But then once he learned the truth, he turned to God and God then healed him. God had mercy on him. This is where you are. If you're sick, you may be a believer, but you're totally ignorant of scripture. You don't understand what it's relating to you. And so you're believing and you're following all the wrong things. So if you would then turn to Jesus and believe that he healed you, then your sickness would eventually leave. And, you know, I have other videos that explain these things to where, you know, people are out there looking for miracles instead of a healing. When God says, turn to me and I will heal you. A healing is something that happens over time. God has to teach you how to stop sinning, how to get the sins out of your life. And these things do not happen overnight. 
people, you know, that's where people fail. They don't have the patience to see things through. When things do not happen in their own time frame, they give up, they lose the patience. You know, in my journey here, what I have learned is that, you know, I'm healed. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm 65 years old. I can do whatever I want. I, I'm, I run circles around most people and everything else because there's nothing wrong with me. I can do anything. You know, yeah, is my body aging? Yes, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to get sick. It doesn't mean that I have to have sickness as my body ages. I'm, I'm eventually going to die to this world. I wish I would die tonight. I wish you would take me out of this evil world tonight. I mean, it's like, gosh, when I see how wicked and evil believers are today, they're, they're totally clueless. They know nothing of God. They don't understand anything about God. That is why they're going to perish in hell, because they're living a lie. They're following all the wrong things. So, you know, what I'm trying to relate is that God said if you obeyed him, he would then keep you free from sickness and disease. He did not say that he would keep you from pain and suffering. And that's what throws a lot of people off. They get a pain in their body and they immediately think that they need a doctor or they need a pill. Well, you know, God told you stand against that pain. Resist the devil and he must flee. And that's what happens. You will learn, and as I've shown and taught other people, is that if they would just stand against that feeling in their body and not speak it, but speak the word of God and say it, instead, that pain would eventually leave. It would go. It would just disappear over time. And that's what would happen because it's a lie, because Jesus did heal you spiritually. You're perfect. But you will not see it in your flesh unless you believe it and you act on it. And that is where people go astray. And that is why they continue to have sickness in their life. you got to learn how to stand against it. But you know what I also have found? You still have to take care of your body. You can't abuse your body. You've got to live properly. You know, what's that saying? If you don't use it, you lose it. Well, I noticed that, you know, when an ache or pain would pop up in my body, I would then start exercising it or using it. You know, when we have uh, sealed my driveway, we I got a super long driveway that required like about 18 buckets of, you know, the coating. And, uh, you know, those buckets are like 50 some pounds a piece. Well, you know, my arm was like afterwards, my arms actually hurt. They were sore and everything else. They hurt for quite a bit. But then, you know, I noticed that once I started, kept moving my arms and, and working them and using them, guess what? That soreness and that pain just eventually left. I didn't need any doctor. I didn't need any pill. Well, you know, that's, that's what I'm finding with some other things in my body now. I need to eat properly. Doesn't mean that I can't eat whatever I want. I mean, I eat, you know, candy, galore. I got a sweet tooth galore. Pizza, ice cream, you know, whatever. But, you know, I have to do it in moderation. I can't just, you know, at times I have a habit my whole life of splurging on junk. Well, guess what? You know, the, just eating junk all the time is not good for me. You know, and where will I feel it? By a pain in my body. So, you know, I've learned that, okay, I gotta, you know, use my body. I gotta treat it properly. I gotta eat properly. You know, I gotta drink plenty of water. You know, when you do those things, when you live healthy, guess what? You don't, I mean, look at the people around you today. Just go outside and look around. Guess what? You know, like 70%, 80% of this United States, everybody, you see, they're overweight. I mean, way, way overweight just a pound or two I mean a lot of people are obese they're not taking care of themselves and so why are they getting sick then there you go that's why and that's that leads to all this coronavirus nonsense and everything else they don't understand that it's all you know yes is coronavirus real yes it's real just like the plagues in Egypt were real yes they're real so when you hear people saying oh they're not real they are real and they will affect anybody who is wicked and evil, who, who does not understand the word of God. 
So, you know, like on the news, you heard about like some preachers that have died, you know, uh, from the coronavirus. Well, guess what? It's because that preacher was evil and wicked. He shouldn't have had a church to begin with. He shouldn't have had people coming to his temple to begin with. And, you know, that'll get me, let me get you some scriptures here to, the, to, to get you to understand. Jesus told us that when you pray, go alone in your room and shut your door, you know, and, and pray to God in that secret place. He said, don't be like the hypocrites who are standing, you know, in their synagogues or on the corners of the street. Well, that's what he's telling you. He's like, don't go to some temple or some man-made, you know, worship center and don't do it out in the open because you don't understand God is spirit and you worship him in here. God now dwells inside of us and you communicate to him through the spirit, your spirit, which dwells inside of you. Listen to these scriptures. This is Acts 7, 48 to 50. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Asked the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? Didn't my hands make both heaven and earth? In Acts 17, 24, it says, he is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he does not live in man-made temples. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? And in 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. That's how you find God. You get alone in your room, you shut your door, you read scripture over and over and over, and then when you have questions, you ask God in your thoughts, in your spirit. You will not be able to do this unless you understand how to test the spirits. And I've got writings and videos that explain how that is done. So once you learn how to test the Spirit, you can go directly to God. You can listen directly to God, and He will teach you, and He will guide you, and He will show you how to overcome sin. Once you learn how to overcome sin, guess what? Then you never will have sickness in your life ever again, because it is definitely sin that is bringing the sickness into your life. And if you have sickness, if you can get sick, then guess what? You do not know Jesus. You know nothing about him. You are simply a lost and deceived soul who does not understand scripture. And if you don't believe this, then guess what? You just damned yourself to an eternity in hell because I'm relating you to you the blessing that Jesus provided for all of mankind and you're somebody that's not accepting it. And instead, you'd rather believe the lies of this world, and you'd rather think that doctors and nurses work for God. Well, guess what? They don't work for God. They work for the devil because they have you believe in their nonsense and their lies. They're not heroes at all, as this world wants you to believe. They're just foolish and evil people who are clueless about Scripture. And if you're following them and, and seeking after them, guess what? You don't know God. You know nothing about him. And you're lost and deceived, and you will eventually perish, and you will not be one of the few. So I've related, I believe, everything that the Lord has wanted me to relate. Plain and simple, stop following mortal men at their churches, their ministries, their religions, you know, on the Internet. Go directly to Jesus yourself. You don't need me. You, and, and, and that's another thing. Stop being, you know, there's certain kids, they, they like get obsessed with me. I, you know, I'm not your teacher. I cannot save you. You are not my responsibility. My job as a disciple is simply to point out what I know, what I have learned from my teacher, and to show you where you are going astray. I point you in the right direction. I say, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you need to do. Now it's up to you to do it. I can't make you believe. It is not my place to teach you. 
You need to go directly to Jesus and learn from him yourself. You need to follow his will for your life. And, you know, that is what some of you out there clearly are missing and overlooking. So, anyway, I um, think I'm done here. It's a little chilly out here, ready to call it a day. And uh, take care, keep praising the Lord, and uh, if he wants me to do another video, then I'll be back. See you later. Bye.